the, the equalizer. <laughs> no, that's what drew me to it. The, 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 was the first one, you know, that um, we we made a film that people were attracted to and, and wanted to see and wanted to see more. So here we are. Uh, you mean like compared to the other ones? I, I don't know. I mean, uh, we're we're very comfortable working together. So y you don't want too many unique things, you know. You 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 want to you want to feel relaxed and, and comfortable taking chances and, and making quote-unquote artistic choices and, uh, and to feel comfortable uh, with a filmmaker to, to, that's going to choose the right uh, takes and things like that. I, I think so. There's more of a, you know, it's not as much of the feeling out process because there's a shorthand, I think, that, 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 that develops a, from you know working together, Antoine, I think I've worked with four times, Spike Lee four or five times. You know different different directors. I think that's why I end up going back to certain directors, Ed Swick. You know, because we have a good, uh, we work well together. Uh, I, I hope so. <laughs> I can't think of any. You know, nothing clever off the top of my head. I haven't used Lyft, no. I've, I've, I, I like driving my own car. The, well, the, the sequence at the end was wet. <laughs> I'll put it that way. You know, shooting this, this big fight in the middle of a hurricane was uh, interesting. The first book that came to my mind, it was not the last thing I read, but uh, Sid Arthur. Herman Hess was one of my favorite books. The Autobiography of Malcolm X was one of my favorite books. I haven't put the Bible down yet. I'm still working on that. Uh, I, I, I try to keep it fresh and exciting for me because I don't know what they've seen. So I can't go around, oh, I got to do this. Have you seen this version of it? You know, so just, just and you, you can get a sense when you're making a movie on a set, what's working by the way, the, especially with the way the crew responds sometimes because they're used to seeing things. So if they if they're excited or they respond a certain way, you get a good idea of what what it might be for the audience. Uh, Robert McCall, the character Robert McCall, very mysterious, intriguing. Uh, we left out a lot in Equalizer One. We didn't tell you a lot of things about him. Um, He's a fun character to watch him serve out some justice, and kick some butt, um, and I just felt like there was a lot more to him that the audience would enjoy to see. Uh, we didn't find it unique. Other people may find it unique. We just do the work. We get together and talk a lot and spend a lot of time discussing the story so that by the time we get to the set, we already know what we're doing. Uh, I don't know about other people, but uh, no, no, not really. I mean, you just get to know each other more, uh, and I think that that's, that's helpful. Um, you get a sense of uh, the person, but never predictable, you know. Uh, the hurricane. Need I say more? <laughs> it was windy and wet and cold and uh, big jet engines and all that kind of stuff. and. Uh, uh, it was uh, a long shoot. That was a tough one. Um, I just try to make a movie that I want to see. I love movies, so it's hard to predict what would be fresh to someone else. Uh, I know that people want to feel something when they go to the movies. They want to get their money's worth. They want to be entertained. Uh, so I always try to give them the best of the material that I can bring out of it that I think will be entertaining and uh, emotional. Ah, what book have I read recently? Well, recently I read a book called The Devil's Soldier, uh, which is a really good book. Um, I'm, not, I'm not even sure if it's even out yet. It's something I'm developing. Uh, a classic book that people should read there's many. There's a book that I think people should read called uh, Man's Search for Meaning. 
I think it's by uh, Victor Frankl, who was a Holocaust victim, and uh, he's a uh, he's still alive, and he wrote a book about his experiences there, and how he found a way to still be a positive, productive, beautiful human being through some horrific things. I think that's an important book for people to see. When you start comparing and complaining, complaining about your life, you might want to read that book. I think we just both matured in different ways. I think we're, we're both probably calmer. You know, just everything's not as intense. <laughs> you know, we know we're going to figure it out, and we know we're going to do our jobs. You know, when you're younger, you, everything, everything is a glass ball that's going to break. <laughs>